The Umbrella Academy Season 2 ups the ante in a lot of ways, and although there have been a ton of standout moments and characters, perhaps the biggest surprise has been the Swedes, the trio of brothers who try to hunt down the Hargreaves family. But who are these cat-loving blonde assassins? This video will explain everything you need to know about the Swedes, including their motivation, where they come from, and whether they have a comic book origin. Be warned, there will be spoilers for Season 2 of the Umbrella Academy, but if you're like me and you've already finished the season, then start blasting the Swedish version of Hello and let's dive in. As if being trapped in the 60s and trying to stop yet another apocalypse wasn't hard enough, our favorite dysfunctional family of superheroes had a whole other threat to contend with when the Swedes showed up to play. Is there anything scarier than three platinum blonde guys who are out for blood? I don't think so. And it's even worse when they think you're responsible for the death of a brother when you did nothing wrong. But uh, we'll get there in a moment. To break it down, the Swedes are a group of triplet brothers named Otto, Axel, and Oscar who work for the Commission. Now, the Commission isn't really a big fan of the Umbrella Academy, you know, because of the whole timeline interference thing, so they send the Swedes back in time to eliminate them. Man, can I just say how awesome of a nickname the Swedes is? It's just so efficient and to the point. It's easier to remember, and it rolls off the tongue much easier than saying Five is being hunted by Hazel and Cha-Cha like in Season 1. Look, if I was being hunted, I don't want to be shouting out, Hey, look out for Hazel and Cha-Cha in a crowded room. I don't think people would take me serious. And speaking of Hazel, the Swedes quickly established themselves as a major threat by eliminating him in the first episode. Ah oh, man, now you know they're serious. Sorry Hazel, I hope you're in some sort of donut purgatory or something. So these Swede fellas mean business. They spend the season hunting down the Umbrella Academy in various locations like cornfields and the Mexican consulate, things like that. Sure, they're not successful, but they pose enough of a threat to keep the Umbrella Academy on their toes and they elevate almost every action action scene they're in. Come on, chop, chop! Even though these guys feel like relentless Terminators from a different country, they don't seem especially bright. They're pretty straightforward guys. You point them in a direction, and they'll most likely start going that way, no questions asked. And while I guess that's a good quality to have if you're an assassin, it doesn't make you that smart. While on their assigned mission, the handler goes above and beyond by sending the Swedes a fake capsule telling them to go after Diego at a special location. But by following those directions, they walk right into a trap the handler set up, which ends up killing one of the Swedes and framing Diego as the culprit. Hey, handler, here's a word of advice. When trying to motivate your goons to do a job for you, don't make them weaker by eliminating one of them. That's just my opinion. Sure, it might have been necessary, but I just think that there was another way around it. But this was the moment that I think really established the Swedes as interesting characters. Watching them put on a Viking funeral for their fallen brother, meaning they put his severed foot on a boat and lit it on fire with an arrow, is a season highlight. When we hear one of the brothers cry out from sadness and rage during the scene, we sort to feel sorry for them. They also made us all afraid to trust milkmen or vacuum salespeople ever again. Not that they're common in 2020, but seriously, if we can't trust a door-to-door -door vacuum salesman, then who can we trust? And I think their disguise is playing to how quirky they are. Take the vacuum salesman costumes, for instance. The last two Swedes arrive at Allison's door in disguise with a full vacuum set. And it's 100% unnecessary because they immediately attack her. Why go through all the trouble of acquiring the costume and the vacuum cleaner when you're gonna attack right away in the first place? It's super extra. I would laugh at them more for that scene, but it's followed by Allison making one of the Swedes kill his own brother, and you can just see the tortured pain in his eyes while doing it. Man, these guys did not have a good season too. I don't know about you, but I need a drink. Overall, the Swedes left quite an impression on audiences everywhere. Even though they didn't talk much, their actions spoke louder than words most of the time. Like, I just keep seeing them play that throw knives at each other game, and that's an image I won't forget anytime soon. And now, here's the big question. Do they have a tie to the original comics? Surprisingly, no. The Umbrella Academy has been super lenient with its adaptation of the source material, and the Swedes were a completely new addition to the show. Originally in the comics, Hazel and Cha-Cha aren't in the first arc, 
York and are instead introduced in the Dallas section. Since those two assassins got the spotlight in Season 1, the show decided to introduce a new trio of assassins to hunt down the Umbrella Academy. And I think even though they don't have a comic origin, they're still interesting enough. At least, I was invested enough to care about the remaining Swede brother. After getting a little bit of redemption, the last Swede standing stays in the 60s to start a new life away from the commission. And given everything he went through, yeah, that's probably for the best. Touching all that stuff about family and dad and time. Which Swede was your favorite?